Good morning, you guys. It's your boy Ben Mahari here, representing Mahari Nature Sports Podcast. Uh, much love to the entire LDBC and the basketball community. You understand what I'm saying? If you want more basketball content, tune in to Basketball Conversations every Friday night at 9 p.m. Central Time. This is where we discuss basketball-related topics, news, debates, and everything else in the world of basketball. If you are new to the channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon to get all the latest notifications when I start dropping videos and live streams. If you want to donate to the channel, I will also post in the PayPal and Cash App links underneath the description box to don't, if you want to donate any money to the value of this channel. Well, with all that out the way, let's get down to another episode of the Morning Historical Perspective. It's my weekly Monday through Friday uh, version of the uh, channel that I always dedicate to historical teams, players, moments, everything in the world of basketball. So for this one here, yesterday I did one about the 2004-2005 Illinois Finding Alumni. This time, we're going to talk about the 1987-88 Kansas Jayhawks that went on to win the national championship, okay? That team was a team that was pretty much an underdog story right when the season started. They were basically began the season unranked, and this was Larry Brown's uh, who was in the Hall of Fame, his fifth season as the head coach of the Kansas Jayhawks. This was a team that was two years removed from their 35-win season of 86 that made it to the Final Four and ultimately lost to Duke in the semifinals. Now, after that year, you know, the Jayhawks basketball team went went down in terms of their in terms of their place in the top 25 rankings. And heading into that year, um, that team, that team started very, very mediocre. This was a team that had little to no expectations of even getting to a national championship. It was not even in the discussion. And they started off the season very, very slow. They went on a 12 and 8 record to start out the year. And they went on a and they were basically on a record of 55 straight games where they won at their home court of Allen Fieldhouse until that game, until that streak was ultimately sat by uh by Kansas State, who were led by Mitch Richmond, who was who was also in the NBA Hall of Fame. This was a this was a very unique team because this was a team that, you know, was a pretty much a team that was so, so, that was basically centered around their All American and their best and their best player, the Naismith Player of the Year of that year, nineteen eighty eight, uh, Danny Manning. Um, this was a this was a kid that it was basically he was six ten who can play the forward and center position. Very versatile. He can run the floor and he can finish at the rim though too as well. And it's a very good rebounder. Now, during that season, in, in, during that 87-88 uh, season, um, Danny Manning was pretty, pretty much started every game, and he, he was averaging 24.8 points per game and was grabbing nine rebounds a game and averaged two assists a game. The second best scorer was also Milt Newton, who was a junior who was 6'4", from the Virgin Islands, who averaged about 11.6 points per game and five rebounds and 1.7 assists per game. But the rest of the team was pretty much a team that was pretty much – but pretty much was centered around the talents of Danny Manning. You know what I mean? And when when they lost when they basically lost that game against Kansas State, the team was was basically in a bit of a losing streak. And during one month, pretty much in January, they they lost pretty much five of their last six games, which duplicated to their 12 and 8 record after the loss against Oklahoma. And then also in February, they lost against Duke and lost to Oklahoma again. So basically, and basically, this was a team that lost to both Kansas State and Oklahoma. Basically, uh, I should say, basically once and twice. And so, heading into the NCAA tournament, nobody gave them any chance of even getting, to, of even not just winning a national championship, but not even getting to the Final Four in general, which was going to be held, which was held at Kemper Arena in Kansas City, Missouri. All right, so. Heading into that tournament, um, this team already had the most losses, you know, out of out of all the other teams in the NCAA tournament. They finished the year with 21 wins and 11 losses heading into the NCAA tournament. And what preceded it happened there was they went on to an unbelievable Cinderella run to the Final Four. They defeated uh, Xavier as in their first round opponent. They defeated Murray State and Vanderbilt. And this is where people started to believe in this team. Because in the regional final against Kansas State, they avenged the loss by defeating them 25, basically 71 to 58 in one in one of their big upsets there during that period of time. 
And pretty much people started to believe, you know what? This team may have a chance because pretty much Danny Manning was pretty much playing out of his mind during that entire tournament. Okay. The guy was pretty much rebounding. He was scoring. He was pretty much doing the miss. He was the pretty much a do it all type of player. And the Kansas fans started calling this, calling, calling this team Danny and the Miracles because of what they were able to do during that period of time. After they defeated Kansas, they made it to the Final Four, where they faced against the Duke Blue Devils, who they also lost earlier in the year. And they went up. Get this. They started the game up at least 14 to nothing against Duke and went on to beat them in the semifinals to advance to the national championship game where they went up against number four, Oklahoma. Now, Oklahoma was one of the best offensive offensive teams in the land. They were pretty much a team that was pretty much a run and gun type of team, you know, and, and they were pretty much a team that was very versatile. They had Harvey Grant, who was the twin brother of Horace Grant, uh, Stacy King, you know what I mean? And they also had a, a point guard pest in Mookie Blaylock, who was one of the, among the league leaders, I should say one of the nation's leaders in steals, a guy that can easily pick your pocket. And nobody heading into that game against, against Oklahoma, they beat, they beaten Kansas twice. Nobody gave Kansas any chance to beat them in, for the national championship. But it was played in Kemper Arena, which was, which was basically close to you know, the Kansas campus. And so on that game, it was pretty much, it was pretty much Larry Brown decided to, at the opening tap, to play a fast-paced type of game against the speedier uh, Oklahoma team that pretty much put the Sooners in the eight ball very, very early. And pretty much Larry Brown didn't originally didn't want to play a speed game, but they saw how his team was being successful with it. And I remember watching the game on YouTube, how Billy Packer questioned why Kansas was playing a run, playing, playing a running fast paced game against a very well conditioned Oklahoma team. And I started to question that a little bit, but I think what, what uh, Larry Brown was trying to do in that championship game was basically manipulate the pace, get the pace, you know, fast pace, high tempo, and then later on, slow the game down and try to break down Oklahoma's, you know, a, a questionable defense. And so at the game, when the game commenced, you know, both those scenes were pretty much going back and forth. It was pretty much a high-scoring type of game, which was tied at 50. But the big difference, Danny Manny. His ability to score on the block, his ability to run in transition and finish, and he was pretty much the difference. And the, in, the, in that championship game, it was basically his final college game. He scored 31 points, grabbed, grabbed 18 rebounds, and basically shot 13 to 24 from the field. And pretty much played one of the probably the best game of his entire of his entire career to close out a great college career. Because Danny May at that period of time was pretty much a guy that was so, so talented in every way, but didn't have the one key credential to, to, to solidify his college career. And in that year in 88, you know, they were able to achieve it. They were able to upset the number four, the probably the number four ranked team in the nation. And a team that they lost to twice, Oklahoma, to win basically their second national championship in school history. At that, until to this day, this is the only national championship team to win to win the title with basically with ten plus losses. They lost eleven games that year. They went nine and five in the big in the Big Eight at the time, which is now called the Big Twelve. You know what I mean? And that team set an unbelievable standard that probably has never been matched. In all the years in the NCAA tournament, there have been a lot of great Cinderella, which includes the NC State team, which I'm going to do a future video about that. But I felt that Kansas team was really one of the most interesting stories because when you think about it during the 80s, we had a lot of Cinderella you know, teams win the national title. You had the 83 NC State team with that unbelievable miracle led by Jim Valvano. You also had Raleigh Massimino and Villanova defeating Georgetown in 1985. And then you had Larry Brown and Danny Manny and the Miracles basically winning the national championship with 11 losses. I mean, that's something that's never been happened in the history of the NCAA Final Four, and it's, and it's not happened ever since. And so that team really was an enjoyable team that people are still going to still talking about to this day. Unfortunately, that team, that team, you know, basically was finished through because all the, the key guys 
like Manny basically went to the NBA and pretty much some most of them graduated. But unfortunately, but the sad part was is that Larry Brown was, was basically under rules, was basically under rules violations from the NCAA and pretty much resigned as head coach after that championship season. So that 88, 89 season for Kansas, they basically this was the only time, you know, during that period as a two as basically as of uh, 2019. This basically was their most recent year of 88, 89 that they did not even make the NCAA tournament. And so it took maybe about a couple of years before Kansas, you know, went back into their national prominence once again. But it still doesn't it still doesn't make it still makes it still doesn't make it, you know, you know, more remarkable about how that Kansas team, you know, came out of nowhere to pretty much pretty much win the national championship. They knew they knew they had the talent, especially when you had a guy like a Danny Manning who could pretty much do everything for you. You know what I mean? But nobody thought that, that Danny May, not just Danny Manning alone, could lead these kind of guys to the national championship. The sad part was that how Danny Manning's career kind of you know went down afterwards. Because as talented as he was, though, those knee injuries that he had sustained in the 90s, particularly when he was playing with the Clippers, uh, with the Hawks, and then later on with Phoenix, those multiple you know knee injuries, his ACL just could not keep up. And it took away what he could have been. Because if, if Danny Manny had not been injured, mostly throughout his NBA career, I think that he would have been maybe a chance to be a Hall of Famer. Because the way he was able to do a lot of things in the open court and pretty much, you know, help the team out in every way, really solidified how great of a player Danny Manny was in Kansas. It's just a shame to what happened to him. But I just wanted to give my uh, my opinion and my just my perspective about that team, and I think that this team deserves a lot more recognition for what they were able to achieve, you know, during the 80s, you know, when a time where a lot of, you know, really good teams, you know, were basically making their cases to try to win the national championship, and most of them did not succeed. And so, for an underdog team like Kansas to be able to achieve that team and basically beat teams that they lost to in the regular season, come back and win it to win the national championship. I mean, you think about it. They had to beat Kansas State that that basically ended their long home winning streak. Oklahoma twice. Oklahoma who lost to the, who they basically they beat Kansas twice. And then Duke, the team that basically eliminated them from the final four in 1986. I mean, you think about all you think about it. Kansas State Duke and Oklahoma to win the national championship. I mean, other than that Arizona team of 97 that defeated all three number one seeds to win the national championship. I mean, this was just a probable run that not many, that basically not many championship teams went through to win the title. And so I think that, you know, this team, you know, deserves a lot of high recognition to what they were able to achieve and what they were able to, you know, set the standard for basically for Kansas basketball. And so, you know, that's just my two cents about them, though, too. But let me know what you guys think about that team and what your memories are and what are your thoughts are about that team. And I'll continue to post up videos later on in the day. So check me out, though, guys. But appreciate you guys. I'll see you all later on in the day. Peace.